Hey guys, it's Josh, Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome to the farm vlog today. Today is tomato picking day. This is a German Johnson tomato. It's got a little bit of a pink uh, skin to it. It's a little thinner skin tomato. And this is a big boy, uh, big boy tomato. It's not a very big, big boy, but whatever. So today I'm gonna take you through the garden. We're gonna pick our tomatoes. And we're not looking for tomatoes that are absolutely red ripe like this one. This guy's ready to eat. He's not gonna last but about eh, two or three days in the house and they'll start to rot. So what we're doing is we're gonna go through and we're gonna pick our tomatoes so we can make tomato sauce. I'll show you what I do, what I pick, why I pick them, and how I store them until they're all deliciously red, ripe, and ready to make tomato sauce. Later on, we'll show you the way I make tomato sauce, and basically what we do, we probably can up enough spaghetti sauce and tomato type sauce for eh, two or three years, probably, this year. We've got about 120 tomato plants back here. Just gonna take my buckets and pick them. So come on along with me, and we'll show you what we're doing in the garden today. All right, woo! Stony Ridge Farm, Stony Ridge, Stony Ridge Farm. Woo! Hee <laughs> hee! All right. So as I walk through the garden here, the tomato plants are all in here behind me. Some of them did really well, some of them didn't do so well. I really didn't give them a lot of attention like I should have, but I still have plenty of wonderful juicy tomatoes like down in here. I don't know if you can see those, but there are tons of tomatoes. I planted several different varieties of tomatoes, a beef eater tomato, a German Johnson tomato, a big boy, a better boy, and the Roma tomato. Now, this is the ultimate sauce tomato. These are the Romas. I'll take you down closer and let you see them. So these are all the Roma tomatoes, guys, and as we walk through, right here is gold. This is absolute gold. These are what it's all about. These delicious Roma tomatoes we're going to be picking today, we'll set aside, let them get absolutely red ripe in the house where it's nice and cool. We'll set them on the counter and basically, yeah, two weeks from now, we'll have all our tomatoes ready and we'll take one day and... <coughs> my rooster's still here. We'll take one day and we'll make sauce and we'll make some awesome sauce. We'll can some tomatoes, we'll make some sauce. I'll show you how to do all that stuff in a future vlog, but right now, rooster. But for right now, we're just going to take you through, show you the tomatoes that we pick, let you listen to the rooster, and that's it. So let me show you what we're going to pick here, okay? We're looking for red ripe tomatoes to eat now or give to the neighbors, and we're also going to pick any tomato that's showing color. The thing about tomatoes is if a tomato is showing color, there's all kinds of schools of thought here. I hate my rooster, by the way. There's all kinds of schools. Shut there's all kinds of schools of thought here on tomatoes, okay? People say, oh, leave them on the vine, leave them on the vine until they get ripe, red ripe. That's when they're the best. But if you're going to can tomatoes, you can't do that, okay? You've got to pick these types of tomatoes. Let's go down here. This is the tomato you've got to pick right here. And this is the tomato that you have to store. And you store them with this end down. I'll show you. Once again, there's a thousand schools of thought on how to store tomato. This tomato is not ripe, okay? It's still got some green on it. But the way we store it, is with this end, the, the uh, blossom end, or where it attaches to the plant, down, okay? We always want to store that down. And we want to pluck off what I call the little pecker. I want to pluck off the pecker and store it down, just like that right there, okay? Don't store your tomatoes like this. Don't store them like that because it'll cause rot in these places. You want to store them with that end down, okay? Just like this one, that end down. So guys, the wonderful thing about having the chickens near the garden here is that we'll take two buckets down with us and we're only going to fill our buckets probably to about right here, okay? We're not going to fill our buckets all the way full. We want to put a layer of two deep tomatoes, okay? The Romas we can fill halfway full, but the other tomatoes, they're so sensitive to bruising, we'll only do them too deep. We'll take them, put them in the house, and then we'll come back. I've got four buckets here. One bucket will be dedicated for chicken food. Anything that's got a worm in it, rot on it, whatever like that, we need to get it off the vine. We'll take it, dump it in there for the chickens, and let them make some delicious eggs out of it. So let's get busy and get to picking. All right.
look at these tomatoes. Look how awesome and delicious. This is gonna be awesome. I cannot wait to make sauce this year. Let's explain something to you really quickly about tomatoes. This is a tomato who turned red and it rained. So once it got watered, it split. Once a tomato turns red, it almost stops growing. And then, that's why you get the split. This won't keep as long. Another bad thing about tomatoes, touching the ground. This is a tomato, beautiful tomato, but it was touching the ground. Here's another one that was touching the ground. Awesome, awesome, beautiful tomato, but no good because it was touching the ground. You've gotta support your tomatoes. And the reason we pick them when they first start turning is so we don't get this. They keep in the house longer. They'll be able to ripen red without rotting if they don't have these little splits in them. All this is for the chickens. Awesome. So here's the awesome bounty for the chickens. Awesome. What an awesome little bounty for the chickens to get. Guys, if you don't have chickens, if you don't have a way of saving stuff, don't throw your scraps away. Don't throw your food away. Even if you live in an urban environment, there's a way that you can use this stuff, okay? So, man, I just cringe every time someone throws a food scrap away thinking, man, if you had chickens, you could just throw them right to the chickens, or if you had some pigs, or if you had a worm composting set up. So look into it, guys. You know, we fill our landfills completely full of food that we throw away. Try to work on not throwing food away, because look at the work that goes into this. You just go to the store, and you buy it, and you throw it away. It's not right. It really bothers me to throw stuff away, and I'm so glad that I have the chickens here that'll gobble everything down if I don't need it. From this point, I just keep on picking tomatoes, guys, until I get them all done. I'll take you inside the house after I get done picking, and I'll show you how I lay them out in the house. Now, basically, uh, with the Roma tomato, you can just lay it on its side, but with the uh, other types of tomato, the big round tomatoes, you've got to lay them uh, with the uh, end down where, where it connects to the tomato plant. Another thing that you really got to think about is keeping air moving around these things, okay? So we'll put a small fan. Uh, oscillating on the uh, tomatoes and we'll keep a fan blowing on the tomatoes to help keep them dry and to keep them from rotting any faster than they should. Uh, these tomatoes will be maybe two weeks or so and every one of them will be deliciously red and ripe and ready to use for sauce. So I'm gonna finish up picking here and then we'll take you inside the house. Another thing we do once we finish picking is now we're gonna really start heavily watering these tomatoes so that they grow very fast. And we'll come through every single day and we'll pick tomatoes out through here every single day until it's time to start canning. That way we can optimize all the tomatoes we're going to use. So here we are. We've got all the tomatoes picked. Here are the people tomatoes. And I've got two five gallon buckets like that full. And then here are the chicken tomatoes. And right now the chickens have plenty of tomatoes in there, but I'm going to go ahead. We're going to throw these guys in here, go up in the house and lay all these tomatoes out show you exactly how I do it. So there's a few take-home messages I want to give you today guys. Some of this is about waste. If you waste food, if you throw food away, that's your prerogative. I don't think it's right to throw food away. There are people starving all over this world and I just don't think it's right to throw food away. Also, things don't go to waste in our house. Banana peels don't go to waste. Old broccoli trimmings, every piece of eggshell, everything all gets reused here on the farm. I encourage you to find a way not to waste, to keep the garbage down, to throw away only necessary things, and compost, compost, compost. If your city doesn't allow for chickens, or if it does allow for chickens, do the research. Get two chickens, get three chickens. They can be your pets, they can be your livestock, they can give you eggs, and they can be your little garbage disposals, guys. So waste, waste, waste. I go and I visit friends and I spend time with people and I see so much waste and it drives me crazy because nothing goes to waste. Not an eggshell, not a banana peel, not an apple core, nothing goes to waste here on this farm. And nothing went to waste before we went to the farm too. We found a way in the city to save. It takes a little bit of extra time, but not much. And once you start doing it, you'll feel guilty for not saving all your food scraps, all your biomass, and using it on your lawn, in your house, and in your life. So guys, the take home message is, try not to waste. Don't throw food away. 
get a couple backyard chickens, you get two hens, nobody will ever even know. And all your food scraps get put right back into the soil. So let's go inside the house and I'll show you everything. So here we are inside the house, okay? Basically, I just take the Roma tomatoes and I try to separate them up here. I try to separate the Romas from the rest of the tomatoes, okay? The Romas will ripen a little bit slower. And that's okay. And basically, I just store them sitting on their side just like that. And we just keep a little fan on them. We keep them in the house where it's cool, below like 75 degrees. And we let everything get red, ripe, and delicious. And that way, our sauce will have the optimum flavor. Why do I do this? It's a lot of work. Is it worth the work? Yes, it's worth the work. These tomatoes were put in the ground by my hands. They're non-GMO tomatoes. They don't have any sprays on them, no insecticides, no nothing. Everything organic, organic fertilizer, organic uh, manure. Well, I don't know if it's organic manure, but it's manure. I know everything that's been put on and or around these tomatoes, guys. It's just a good way of living, okay? So we'll take this, all this bounty of tomatoes, and we'll make sauce, we'll can tomatoes, and we'll have tomatoes all through the winter, and we'll have wonderful, wonderful spaghetti sauce, salsa, and all sorts of stuff. So that's it. Guys, I encourage you not to waste. Click that thumbs up button if you can, okay? This is just a way of life. If you like the way of life, if you want this way of life, leave me a comment. Tell me what you think. If you got some other tips for me, leave me a comment. Uh, can't hurt. So click that like button, subscribe to the channel if you can. I'm going to get to work here putting these tomatoes up. And I thank you for watching. Thank you a whole lot. We picked, uh, I'd say we picked about 70 or 80 pounds of tomatoes today. That's pretty cool. Guys, come back and see me. This is Josh, Downey Ridge Farmer. Woo! Well, come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and bring your kids. We're living life pure and sweet. That's the way it's supposed to be, Stony Ridge.